This is the Empower Podcast. Release February 20th, 2024. Episode 659. Altium acquired. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. And Hajime Mashte to all you Altium users, because you are now joining the land of the rising sun, hopefully. Breaking news, breaking news. Um, yes, Altium has been finally acquired by well, Renesis. Now, not acquired yet. Uh, this is this part well, of the conversation, I think. I, I don't, I'm curious. No, no it, well, it's signed. Not like, like it's a done deal. No. It's a done deal, but it hasn't technically happened yet, I don't think. This kind of stuff like, gets blocked by regulators all the time, man. Figma was not bought by Adobe. Well, d- 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 uh, yeah, okay. I personally, but, uh, like, I personally do not think this this deal should be able to go through. Really? Why? Yeah. Okay. Tell us why. I think I think this is – so I don't know anything about the uh, – how about this? If I was a chip company and I was competing with Renaissance, I would be uh, a little shaken by this. I think, right. yeah. I think that this is potentially, you know, like this is basically, I, I don't think they have like direct access to customer data. I'm sure that they have protections in place for that. And mm-hmm. yet um, it feels like a really strong competitive advantage. And you could say that Renaissance owning Altium is maybe just, just another cash flow into the bottom line kind of thing for them, whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, it feels like, it feels like finger on the scale kind of thing. So I would, well, I'd say, yeah. There's th- a couple of issues involved in here. Not only is Altium a PCB design company, obviously. No, company, as one article said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, PCB design company. But they also have uh, Octopart, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Which is, well, you know, there's basically two big uh, industry, uh, you know, search engines, right, for mm-hmm. parts. When You know, if you want to type in a part number, you want to find the cheapest price, availability, all that sort of stuff across multiple uh, vendors, then you either use Fine Chips or you use Octopart. Fine Chips are uh, owned the by Supply Frame, supply now, frame. now Siemens. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right, yeah, well, Siemens now, yes, of yeah, course. Right. Right. And um, Altium own Octopart. They bought that, right. you know, quite a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. And w- which is an incredibly smart move on their part. Yeah, Incredibly good investment. Smart. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely fantastic. And, and then allowed them to have like a, a library of data pulled in, that stuff like that. They had the kind of a social uh-huh. face where, yep. where they didn't have a, a cloud product for a long time. Well, they you know they get a quasi cloud product, but that was basically a, a, a cloud facing product to get like intelligence data around what people are searching for and whatever. Our team yeah. have bought quite a few cloud companies over the yeah. years, yeah, so right. yeah, cloud related uh, right. Right. companies. And now the you know Altium 365 is known as their cloud right. that's solution, what I was, that's and that's. Yeah, the their cloud offering. Yeah, yeah, and that's one of the things we'll go into that uh, Renesis actually uh, want. Um, and, but the other one, which a lot of people don't know about, is that um, Altium owned Taskin, and you've probably never heard of Taskin. Okay, but it's big in uh, well Europe, um, I guess I, somewhere like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Japan, all right. No, it's big in 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 the Europeans um, uh-huh. regions, right? The right. EU kind of thing. And what Tuscan is is it's a, a compiler slash uh, development system debugger, everything for automotive processes. Right, and I'm talking not just Renesis, right? It'll do the RH850 series. Uh, It'll do okay. Infineon. It'll do Freescale. It'll do Bosch. Um, so it's and more like a, a bunch of like a Sega kind of. It's, it's like a Sega debugger kind of thing, yeah, but it's okay. like I believe it's an actual compiler. I've never actually used it myself, but um, yeah, Tasking is like a big. Tasking was like I think one of, if not the biggest, sort of like debugger in the automotive space. Mm. It was quite large. So I don't know what it's like these days. I don't know. Uh, you know, leave it in the comments if you have an idea of how, uh, you know, big it still is. But it, yeah, it used to be a big deal. And when Altium bought Tasking, that was a big deal in the automotive industry. So now Renesis, who one of their big uh, markets for their uh, processors 
is not the mar- not the sort of like the hobby kind of you know hacker markets that we're kind of into, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's in the automotive space. <laughs> They're in the place where there's actually money, <laughs> <laughs> where there's actually money and volumes in the tens of millions, right? right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. right. It makes sense. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so they're big in that. So yeah, there's a few things going on there. It's not as simple as just you know PCB design. So yeah. Anyway, right. yeah, so. which it was so okay. Yeah. So all this stuff is interesting, and you know, I think my mind went negative in thinking just like okay, uh, if if there was access to this customer data, which I don't think there is. Um, basically, they would have this mm-hmm. competitive advantage around like it, competitive advantage is probably the best way to say it too, because it would be like. They would be able to see what other chips are out there. They would be able to see if their chips are doing well, if they're targeting the right market, if there's like a gap in the market, that sort of thing. Like I could see that all being a competitive advantage. Possibly. I don't think but they have I don't think it I don't gives think them they that much the, visibility though. Yeah. Like it doesn't give you insight into the organization of how many parts you're buying at what price and stuff like that. Like it doesn't give you I any of that. I didn't think that. that. I just meant like metadata, like like is this chip on the board, right? Is it like a like you wouldn't. There's a difference between like Possibly, bomb but and buying there, data. There, wouldn't there be companies out there that could sort of like sell you that kind of data anyway? Mm, I think that you stuff's know? pretty close to the vest. Yeah. I think. I think. I mean, you could you could definitely you know maybe if uh, Arrow or Abnet had that data, they could say like, you know, that uh, twenty companies in this region are using chip ABC one two three that sort of thing, and they right. can anonymize it. Right. But but having just cl- being closer to that data means you can kind of close the loop a little bit as a design. Is a silicon designer, that sort of thing. Got it. I'm probably yeah. being like a bit too cons- conspiratorial on this. Oh, stuff. I like, think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm I sure so. I am because, like, I'm not sure I would sign that. You know, if, like I was a Tesla and using using Altium or something like that. I wouldn't sign. You know, if my data wasn't safe, I wouldn't sign the software agreement. Right? There would be like mm. provisions in place there. But there's always metadata, and you can always kind of get some kind of information about that sort of thing. So possibly, but yeah. another thing a lot of people don't realize is that you know Altium have been pushing all this cloud solution, right? Right. But in the industry, the customers, especially the big customers, go, uh-uh, yeah, I, I ain't having outside. my shit yeah. on the cloud. That's, that's right. why yeah. I want my internal, like, that, that's why Altium had to build specific tools to let you host your own, like, internal cloud on your own, like, inside your company. So it still works cloudy, mm-hmm. but it's yeah. not web-based. It's it's right, on your right, own right. server, secure within your own company, right. you know, uh, server system. Right, and I think that's how a lot of the big so, iron acts yeah. currently, anyways. Right, like if you look at like, like, um, uh, God damn, one of the other the other big ones that are out there, um, Mentor, and, and all all those, yeah. yep, all of the, yep, yep. Yeah. They they all have nah. on premises, you know, software and you know, like enterprise level type stuff like that yes. for similar reasons, that's right? Especially like in the defense yeah. industry, automotive, right? They want to basically lock everything down. Mm-hmm. So like that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I could imagine if you just focus on the Altum 365, which has been a huge focus from, you know, the mass market stuff, right? So now putting aside the 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 large scale, which I'm sure represents a ton of their their revenue streams, but even if you mm. just look at the number of users that are out there, I'm sure that the Altium 365 stuff is also, you know, has more users maybe at lower spend number per user but has a lot of inf- interesting information there that's sure. thing. yeah so do you know how many subscribers <coughs> altium has how many users so well, not users but like ones who actually subscribe to the yes know, the I maintenance program yes. in fact i will share my screen with you uh there was a there's a zoom call that's public that you can just watch yeah. And no, I can't find it, of course. Um, oh, I've got the slides for it. So Oh, you do? Oh, yeah, there you yeah, go. yeah, yeah. I've oh, okay. got the slides for it. So Never anyway, yeah. and people are so going, that, tell us how many subscribers? 61,000 subscribers. Yes. 61,000 subscribers. Yeah. And I can't tell if it's in that number if a subscriber at like, so if it's like, I'm a guessing that's individuals. A subscriber would be somebody on maintenance. It'd be somebody yeah. on maintenance. And, th- right. yeah, and that if, wouldn't if be you're one ABC company. ABC Corp, yeah, that's what right. I mean. Is, like, yeah, is yeah. ABC Corp no. the, the one subscriber because they're the paying for it and they have 100 engineers or is it 100 engineers mm. at ABC Corp? Well, you would, I would think assume the that latter. for marketing reasons they yeah, would exactly. inflate you the numbers, have right? right. Yeah, yeah. So right. we're probably looking at the same slide here. This is page five mm. of their slide presentation. And they show yep. 61,000 subscribers, 36.5 EBITDA, like... 77% recurring revenue. But the, the one next to that, that's the one that really gets me. I'm just so surprised by this. Okay, so they had Altium at a glance, $263 million in revenue. Yes. 
in revenue. 2023. And, they saw, and uh, we, revenue. we haven't even said how much were they bought for? 9.3 yeah, oh, yeah. billion Australian dollars. Or which six, is what? 6 billion US dollars. 5. Uh, 6 billion uh, we'll say six. US it's dollars. Easy. Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. is, by the way, is yeah. the largest acquisition of any company on the Australian stock exchange by a <laughs> Japanese firm in history. So it is, it is huge. Yeah. As far as right. the Australian stock market is concerned. Um, now, right. to answer your question before is, will this be stopped by the regulators? regulators? Well, who are the regulators in quote marks? They would be the Australian regulators. This is, right. remember, Altium is still an Australian company, are, yeah, even though their right. headquarters are in the US. Which right? is weird. I, I didn't know that. I thought, they'd move the, I thought they'd move the company to the US too, but no, they, it's just the headquarters. Uh, well, their, their official headquarters is there. So I don't know how that works in US corporate law, but they're publicly listed on the Australian stock market. Yeah, but right? e- they're still EU regulators publicly block listed stuff. Here. Like EU regulators are the ones who tanked uh, the Activision Microsoft deal, right? And, and yeah, they're not but- a- they're not but a European company. Renesis so. are not buying Altium US. They're buying all of the shareholders on the Australian mm. stock market. Got it. Right? Got it. So I think yeah. it comes under Australian corporation law. It could be wrong. I, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't think, I don't think the Yanks company, get a say in it. A country sure. uh, often have had a say in, in but big enough because deals. Because they like are that. officially headquartered there, maybe yeah. they do also have a say. But yeah. in theory, Renesis could just simply buy all the shares and own – like and there's nothing you can yeah, do to right. stop them. Effective, right? yeah. <laughs> they could they could effectively say like, hundred dollars a share, here you go, and everyone sells. Right. Yeah. And mm. which they sold for sixty eight Australian dollars per share, That's if you right. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which was like thirty four percent or something above the that that day's market price. Yeah. So yeah, it was a big knockout really offer. It's like yeah. a really they're they're really overpaying. So like they have big dreams at least, right? So oh, yeah. they're basically yeah, they're, yeah. twenty-four <laughs> times the revenue, not even the profit, just the yes. revenue. And so yes. like they're probably interested in the cash flow from it. Like I don't know how that stuff well, works. Well, Alt- Alt- Altium is debt free. A, a lot of people don't know this. Altium has mm. always been a debt free company, okay. uh, which I'm sure but, we'll go into because it comes into but, my horror story. Yeah, but <laughs> but still, like that's that's a lot of. <clears throat> that's a lot. That's like oh, that's paying it's, a lot. Uh, Twenty times over. Yeah, yeah. Over yeah, revenues, Dave. Not over like yeah, profits. I know. I know. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot. They're paying. Well, uh, we should talk about the previous deal. What t- a couple of years back, um, where they turned down a thirty-four dollar a share offer from Autodesk. Autodesk mm-hmm. tried to buy Altium, and the Altium. CEO and, and advised the shareholders not to take it. He thought mm-hmm. that they could get better value. And sure enough, that was a good call. It was. Um, yeah. it, it, as far as the shareholders went. Mm-hmm. Two and a half years call. later and they doubled yeah. his money. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Who, who would you rather have seen it sold to? Autodesk or Renesis? Um, I don't really have a dog in this race, Dave. I mean, like, right. I, well, you, well, you seem to. That you, you are unhappy that Renesis bought them. No, I'm unhappy. So, if I take the perspective of another chip company, I was unhappy. Right, I would, that's okay. that's the first thing my my brain went to is just like, oh wow, yep. I I had nefarious thoughts about mm. this sort of thing. It it could be completely misplaced. Don't, just so that's. You know, is there clear. an analogy for this? Like this is the company that makes the tools that design the boards that the chips are put on. So okay. like. You know, how far removed, is that enough far removed from the sale of chips to be a kind of meh thing um, or what? I don't know. It's kind yeah, of- I, guess, I guess if we moved up to the value chain too, right? And if we said like, okay, now Renaissance is not going to buy Altium, but they're going to buy... Mm. Uh, well, Mentor if- and, like, and like the chip design yeah. software as well, right? So now like competitors... Right. Who the competitors in the silicon space would then be upset because it would be like, well, now our design tools are owned by our competitor. Okay, what if it wasn't a chip company? What if it was AVX, who make caps? What uh, if it was a capacitor manufacturer who bought Altium? I would say we're paying too much for caps if they can afford it. <laughs> right. yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> There's too much free cash floating around. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, for those who want to know, um, and this is an all-cash deal. I think they did get a loan for some of it, but it's basically an all-cash uh, deal. Um, mm-hmm. the, uh, Japanese firms, are, J- Japan is on a 30-year high. Um, as far as cashed up companies go. So there's a lot mm. of cashed up companies in Japan buying up companies right about now. So it's a big thing. So, well, well it's a thing anyway. So, okay. um, I didn't yeah. Know. So, yes. So there you go. Uh, Japanese 
yeah, there's a lot of companies doing this. Mm. So, okay. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'd, we've seen obviously a lot of consolidation in the chip market itself, right? Chip companies buying other chip companies, <laughs> right? I mean, no, no <laughs> doubt about that. It's been almost total. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised there's not just one chip maker now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there's that's been right. so many. It's just laughable yeah. over the years. We couldn't get so much we joke about. We literally can't keep up. Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah, nuts. Well, what happens is so, new new upstarts happen and I just buy those chips, you know. <laughs> right. in China, out of China. And yeah. out of China, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I'll take it, no. yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, it's uh, that's where the regulators might step in if it was a Chinese company buying, they might go, because see, Chinese yeah. out of flavour at the moment. China's out of flavour at the moment. Yeah, right. With right. the Australian government, with the US government, with that's everyone, right. basically. Yeah. So whereas Japan, hey, you know, friendly Japan, everyone mm. wants to be, you know, <laughs> fine. They've been done anything for 30 years. They've been neutral, you know. It's mm -hmm. like... You know, yeah, I think ever since they dominated the industry, for those who don't remember, right, you know, right. all the, the best stuff's Sony. made in Japan, That's as right. Marty McFly <laughs> says, you know, back right. in the 1980s. Um, yep. Mm. Then their economy tanked. And, right, and there was uh, there was some negative stuff then too, right? There's price fixing around DRAM prices and stuff like that. I mean, oh, like there's just well, yeah. big companies, lots of money <laughs> flowing around, like, you know, just stuff happening. But, um, mm. yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so I don't know. What do you think of all this stuff, Dave? I mean, like, you are a former Altium I'm, I'm a former Altium. I spent four, mm -hmm. I was an inmate for four years at Altium. That's right. I um, mean, you're a lo <laughs> long, you're probably the longest time user of Altium and PCAD. What was it before? I started using Altium, which was uh, Protel back then. It was Protel, Protel Auto it. Tracks. And that yeah, was, right. um, for, for those who don't know, Altium's an Australian company. They were founded in Tasmania. Of all places, the Mapitazzi right. in yeah. uh, 1985 by Nick Martin, who's a very nice guy, um, and he was working at the University of Tasmania. Oh, I might as well go through the history, shall I? Sure. Yeah. Okay. He was working at the University of uh, Tasmania at the time in 1985, and he went, "Hey, you know, maybe this PCB design software." So he got uh, Turbo Pascal. Um, back in Tur Ball and Turbo Pascal, and he wrote the DOS-based uh, PCB tool. It was called Protel PCB back then. That was in 1985. And I started using it in 89 at my first company, okay. 89 at my first company. And that was um, – and then they, it was only a PCB tool back then. It didn't have the companion schematic. That actually only came a couple of years later, That I think 87, 88, something like that. Uh, mm. Protel schematic, and then they released a low cost version. It was called Easy Tracks, um, and that was low. I can't remember the prices at the time, <laughs> but uh, and and it was dongle. It used a hardware dongle at the time. Oh, classic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but, something but, where like I think about like talking <laughs> to my kids about it and be like, yeah, yeah. yeah there's no app store. There was no. There no, was the you UPS in van dongle into the parallel delivering port. an envelope with a yeah. you know a DB25 <laughs> to the back of your. Power shove it computer. in, shove it up yeah. your printer port, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you could still plug your printer in the back of it. it was kind of like in uh, like series through. with it, yeah, yeah, yeah right, pass through right. kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and but in uh, I think eighty nine or ninety maybe they uh, re released uh, version one point six one ND, and ND stand for no dongle. So they released a no dongle version, and that one was pirated like. <laughs> Like there was no tomorrow <laughs> once that happened. So everyone I knew had a copy of 1.61 ND, um, <laughs> the no dongle version. But but they still made money hand over fist, right? You know, it was it was still fine. The company did absolutely um, fantastic. And then I think in the early 90s, probably 1990, 91, they uh, released – hey, back then this was groundbreaking. It was the first CAD software for Windows, People mm. don't know that, like, everything was, like, DOS-based or, you know, Unix even back then. You had to, like, get out, you had to get out of Windows into the DOS prompt and then run Yeah, yeah, this was, like, Windows 3.11 stuff, right? Yeah, right? This is the days of Windows 3. And they released, um, oh, man. yeah, uh, no, Protel for Windows. No nostalgia for those days at all. No? Oh, None at all. It's great. Oh. It's great. Oh. Yeah, you, you you haven't lived un unless you've installed Windows on 12 floppy disks. Yeah. You know, like were you yeah. on the show? Who the hell was telling? Oh no, it was when because I recorded. Um, I recorded with Jeff when when yep. you were. Uh, yes, yeah, so I knew Christmas that one. thing. Yes, yeah. I was on holidays. He was telling me CRTs are back in fashion. Did you know this? What did you no. hear about this? No. Yeah, I was just no. like, what are you talking? Like, I what? thought Jeff was trolling me. He's like, yeah, you know, like there's like vintage collectors and like the people want to have CRT because of fast response times and 
I, I still don't believe it. Fast response time on a CRT? Have, have you heard it, about phospho lag? I mean, Dave, I am not the person. Call Jeff. You know, that right, sounds like a good. Okay. That sounds like a good EV blog <laughs> thing where you just like. All right, now we're going to talk to a weirdo in Seattle. <laughs> About CRTs. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Ah, white for the win. White phosphor for the win. None of this green or amber rubbish. Yeah. I was a white phosphor fanboy, but, but that was it. quite okay. rare back in the day because it used a, like an expensive phosphor or something. It used a, you know, mm. wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Most people just use green or amber back in the day, but. Yeah, white was all paper white, as they called it. Oh, paper white monitors. And then you could get a vertical form factor monitor. So it looked right. like an A4 right, Dave, page. We're, we're, going too, we're going too deep here, man. We're going too deep. <laughs> it's the early days of desktop publishing, you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. that was a big deal. Anyway, yeah. early 90s, ProTel for Windows, right? And that was a big deal. And I switched over to uh, ProTel for Windows because this is when I started working as a professional PCB designer, was like in the early uh, 90s. And um, yeah, so I was using ProTel for Windows, and that was that was great. That was absolutely great. But that was the first CAD tool, especially the first. I think it was the first CAD tool for Windows, let alone PCB tool. Mm. So it was the first PCB tool by donkey's years for Windows, I think. So yeah, and it and it caught on big time. So they bet big on uh, that Windows would, because at the time it didn't. People didn't know that Windows would be the future. It was like. Mm, you know, we don't know, is Mac going to dominate? You know, is the Mac OS going to mm, dominate? Yeah. Is it going to be Windows? Is it going to be something else? It would about it 30 be... years later, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's <laughs> like, yeah, but they they bet and they won. So anyway, um, yeah, so ProTel for Windows and then Altium uh, uh, did a, in, uh, they did a public listing on the, uh, in 99, 2000, I think it was late 99, um, they Listed on the Australian uh, stock market, and they had uh, ProTel 99 back then, and ProTel 99 SE, which was the industry standard tool for 20 years. Practically everyone in China, every development house in China used ProTel 99. <laughs> it was like yeah. it, it was it, the industry standard. I can't believe how long. When 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 I was working there in 2011. And like the early 2010s, people were, it was incredibly difficult for the salespeople to sell new licenses to Altium because everyone was happy with ProTel 99 SE. Yeah. They were going, why do I want to buy this new version? I'm happy. ProTel does everything I want, you know, and it's stable and it's, you know, it <laughs> had uh, bugs, but it had a bunch of documented bugs. I, th I think I had personally had 12 documented bugs in ProTel 99 SE, but being a professional designer, I know how, how to just, of, Work around of it. avoid yeah. the bugs happening, you know. Yep. So, um, yeah, and then uh, so they're publicly listed on the share market. I think at five bucks a share or something, five Australian dollars per share. So, so if you bought way back then, and I know somebody did <laughs> bought big way back then, um, it's you know it's to sell for sixty eight dollars, like twenty four years later, is not a, it's not a big increase. It's not. Um, it's, it's actually not much. So yeah, really, to make no money, like, like that. Yeah, yeah. So everyone's talking about Altium being this huge success story, but a lot of people don't know that they no. Or, or was it two dollars fifty or something they floated at? Anyway, it was a couple of bucks, right? So to go from a couple of bucks to sixty eight dollars now that uh, they were bought at is not is not a huge increase. So you had to write. So you had to buy in right at the bottom but of course what happened in 2000 it was the dot com bust right so right. so they listed just before the dot com bust happened and of course uh, yeah the shares just went down and down and down and they eventually got down to 10 cents um that was when i was working there they were 10 cents a share so if you bought in back then um as i was going to i've told this horror story before i realized that um i could have made 13.7 million dollars <laughs> 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 that's Whoops. what they'd be worth today yep yeah. not yeah. not including dividends along the way yeah oh boy anyway mm. <clears throat> yeah i what i wouldn't have held on Dave. for 15 Come yeah on, i wouldn't have yeah, held on yeah, for that yeah, long yeah. yeah i know yeah but um yes so and and of course um a bit more history is that uh back then is that okay uh no hang on altium bought morphic when I was there, I think, in 2011 or something like that. And Morphic, for that, those who don't know, the current CEO is not Mick, Nick Martin. He's gone. Sorry. He was booted Aram? out, right? So the original say, founder. Sorry? Aram? How's, who's the new guy? Oh, um, 
Aram Merkazemi. I'm okay. I, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. I think it's Aram Merkazemi. Okay. Okay. Um, it's an Iranian name. Um, anyway, he was one of the original employees at uh, Protel back in the day because he um, worked at the University of Tasmania, Tasmania with Nick Martin or he was a friend of his or something like that, right? But, but he was based in Tasmania back then, so he was one of the early employees. And uh, after the um, share market, uh, after they, uh, they, they did the IPO on the share market, uh, Aram left to form his own company called Morphic, which was getting into cloud stuff and other uh, development uh, yep, things and yep, stuff like yep. that, right? And he wrote forum so like you could use this forum software. So I think the Altium forum today is still using Morphic software, <laughs> right? Still using Morphic, <laughs> which is quite funny. And then in about 2010, 2011 or something like that, um, Altium acquired Morphic. And this was a big thing with the shareholders at the time because Altium was like, their shares were like 10 cents. They were in the toilet, right? They're like 10, yeah. 15 cents or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but they were in the toilet, right? Altium didn't have much cash to throw around. So they, um, so they, uh, Morphic was a company that uh, was practically dead. It only had like $50,000 income or something like wow. that, yeah. <laughs> right? It was, and this is not, private information. This is all publicly available information, right? If, if, if you followed the uh, Altium press releases at the time and everything else, right? It's all in there. Um, yeah. And uh, because I don't have any private information, by the way. <laughs> so everything I know <laughs> comes from publicly released Altium information yeah. on the share market. And no, then Dave, uh, Dave didn't pay attention at all when he worked there. So he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. I, I didn't. I was not in the click. You know, I was not part of the click. Right. <laughs> we, we won't go into that right. side of things. But yeah, I was definitely not part of that. So, but, you know, I followed it uh, closely, as did many other users at the time. Because I'm an Altium user, even though I was an Altium employee. I was an Altium user first, really. First and foremost, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I followed all this stuff, and they acquired. I think they acquired Morphic. So Altium. So Nick bought out his best buddy, um, Ram's almost worthless company at the time, and it was like ten percent or something of Altium shares went went towards it. Ten, fifteen percent. It was huge. Is it because and Altium was worth so little? Is that what you mean? Well, no, I think he just wanted to help his mate out, I think. Oh. I don't know. I, I don't, like, Morphic was not worth that much. And everyone, like, I think there was a big shareholder thing at the time. A lot of shareholders were grumbling, like, why have you given, you know, 15% or 10, 15% of the Altium shares? Yeah. I don't know if they released new shares for that. They might have. They might have diluted them or something. I don't know. Can't remember the details. But anyway, they paid. Morphic a lot. was spelled M O R F I K. Yes. M O R F I K. Oh. Yeah, Morphic. Oh, God. <laughs> Morphic you know, technology. Here's the thing, Dave. I this show <laughs> is made for nerds, and yep. uh, you know we're we're nerds at heart, but we yep. are terrible at naming things. Like. This I is know, what happens when yes, a double, what, yeah, a, a yeah. double E goes and names a company. <laughs> yes, because names what a company. the it's hell? Mo yeah, yeah, it's oh, Morphic. So yeah, I have no names. idea what it means. I've got no idea. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, so Morphic, uh, so they bought Morphic for a huge premium, which gave Aram, who I think was probably Morphic's only shareholder, because it was just, I think it was a one man company almost. Um, and it gave him. Because he still had shares for when he owned, when he worked and went f through the uh, float, the Altium float, you know, when it flowed on the stock market. So he still had, and being one of the original, not founders, but he was one of the first em employees there. He had a lot of shares, so this gave him a lot of shareholder. Yeah, I mean, his that that article power. you sent me said that he's going to make six hundred fifty million dollars on this deal. He's going to make six hundred fifty million dollars in Nick Martin. That's unfortunately, sold all zero. his shares yeah, after yeah. something I'll tell you about in a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, so <laughs> so they they acquired Morphic, and I think yeah they're still using Morphic as like the forum software. So if if you I haven't used the Altium forum for God, can't even remember the last time I used, but I think I still use Morphic. So they had some a, sort of cloudy and deployment the technology. Oh, yeah, here you go, Hobart, Tasmania. It is yeah. a Morphic. Is uh, Ajax? Ba oh, wow, this doesn't even Ajax, make sense. that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's Ajax. an Ajax. I always thing. think of Ajax right. was like the thing that like. Uh, it was the tool when remember when Google used to have a home page where you could like customize it and you could like drag like widgets around on like no? a browser. Yeah, I used to love that. it. Oh man, you really? could like have like a you'd have like all these different you could have like a Gmail thing, so it was like a 
customizable homepage. Yeah. Um, okay. And that was all Ajax based. So anytime you like click and drag something around, right. it's Ajax based. Okay. So that's what I always think of when I think of Ajax, but it's not. Yeah. It seems like this right. is just software type stuff, huh? Mm, yeah. Okay. So anyway, it's all. I don't know. It's, it's a sort of visual development cloudy. tool which lets developers create Ajax-based web applications in a true well, WYSIWYG Web fashion. applications, that's it, yes. So, yeah, so you okay. could make forums, a web-based forum software, or you make no. any. So it wasn't <laughs> forum software. It was kind of like a, yeah, compilery, sort of like a visual GUI compilery something or other. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so Altium bought Morphic. And, uh, of course, Altium was in the toilet at the time, but Nick Martin, he, of course, being the original founder, he had the most shares and nobody could ever. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why um, a lot of people didn't like the direction that he took in, in in terms of the company product direction and, you know, stuff like that. But they couldn't say anything because he was the biggest shareholder. But uh uh, apparently, the Morphic ac- ac- acquisition um, gave Aram a ton of shares, and then, in I guess, in conjunction with the rest of the board members who also have shares, who also had a significant number of shares and other significant shareholders, they finally had the numbers to boot Nick Martin out as the uh, CEO of Altium. Um, so I think, what was that, 2012, maybe? 2013, something like that. I can't remember exactly, but um, yeah, uh, Nick Nick got booted out, um, and then out, and then after that, um, Aram. No, they had an interim CEO, I think, uh, one of the board members or something, and then a year later or something, they um, appointed Aram as the CEO, and he's now the current CEO. He stands to make you know 650 million dollars or whatever, and uh, they changed the company direction. They you know scrapped all the all, all the China. Stuff so they moved out of China because that was a big mistake. Altium, of course, packed up and moved to China, and that's when they sacked half the company, of which yeah. I was one of them. Um, that's right. right. And uh, yeah, and best they moved decision to China, that ever happened to you, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I know. you wouldn't I know. be where you are great. right now. You'd still be a. Yeah, but the worst decision was not buying, not using my twenty grand payout to buy Altium shares at ten cents. Yeah, the hell know? would you know that though? Come on. Yeah, I, I know, I know, because yeah, no one could predict that Nick would have been booted as CEO. You know, so anyway, and and they totally changed, and they focused on the actual PCB product, and they focused on, and then they started paying a dividend back to shareholders, and and it just slowly got, you know, the share price just kept going up and up and up and up, and never really stopped. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was so. I, I kind of feel sorry for Nick because he's a nice guy. I do like Nick, and he founded it. And uh, yeah, I'd, and he um, after he was booted out, I think shortly after he sold all his shares, mm. I do believe at a pretty rock bottom. Yeah, I'm sure they price. were forced to sell, sort of thing, right? If you're not allowed no, to. No, 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 no. He was not forced. He just, oh, no? I think he just had enough, or maybe he needed the money for some other venture. I don't know mm. what he Could went be. into, but okay. anyway. Mm. Um, yeah, unfortunately, he. I do believe, I don't know, stand to be corrected, but I think he sold all his shares. So I don't think Nick, the original founder, gets anything out of this new acquisition deal, which is a real shame. Whereas Aram, well, hats off. <laughs> he, he, he really directed the company well, um, like in terms of business-wise, and uh, it turned it into the behemoth it is these days. And um, I'm, like most people on the share market have no idea what LTM does. They're like, like yeah. as, as you said, like there's articles calling them like a chip maker company or something. I just found a like Sydney a- Morning Herald article where it <laughs> oh says- Oh God, what does it say? It's about Aram actually, former refugee now worth 300 million as this obscure tech firm soars, which is like, all right. Yeah, I guess if you're like not oh, into yeah, electronics. No, it, 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 well, that's actually accurate. It, it's totally obscure. Nobody obscure? knows what LTM yeah, does. I guess so. Yeah. I've, I, I've actually had a couple of um, investor deep, companies- I know too many Altium users. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've had a couple of in investment companies firms actually contact me because oh, at, yeah. at the time, you know, when the, uh, I guess my, my name was out there of having worked at Altium and they wanted to pay me to get my opinion on the, what is this Altium thing? And, you uh, know, is it, is, worth it, it, right? is, is yeah. it worth us investing in it? And yeah. what are the competition and how do they interact? And they were, they were going to pay me to sit down with them. I said, nah, couldn't be bothered, you know, mm. um, and uh, yeah, this was a, when it started to gain uh, traction, you know, they were starting, they were at a few bucks and they're starting to climb up and they're debt free and cash, you know, they got cash yeah. coming out cash the wazoo. And, yeah, right, right, and right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can't believe I didn't know. I knew the company at the time. I knew the company had zero debt 
and it was at cash value. For those who don't so like, know, uh, that is like, like a it safe is buy, like, you're saying. Like it is unless the company drives itself into the ground, which by the way could have happened. Right? Could have happened. <laughs> they tried a couple of okay. times. <laughs> <laughs> could have happened. But yeah, for those who don't know, the ultimate buy-in of a company is when it's at cash value, which means that say a company's worth um, a company has a I share valuation. Say, Dave. I think an what you entire mean to say market is, valuation is that of the Ambauer does not offer any investment advice <laughs> no, in any legal capacity. Uh, yeah, blah, and, uh, blah, Share blah. prices, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the holy grail, right? Mm-hmm. Is if you can find a company, let's say they have a total market valuation, which is the share price multiplied by the number of shares, right? Let's say it's worth 100 million bucks. And they have $100 million, ca- and, but that company has $100 million cash in the bank and zero debt. <laughs> so you are not paying any multiple at all for this company. There yeah. is no multiple involved, right? So it's like it's the holy grail buy-in. Yeah. And I knew it. I knew it was the holy grail buy-in, but I still didn't do it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Anyway. Nothing dumbass. venture, nothing gamed, huh? Yeah, yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Stupid. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> I'm sure I would have sold when it became a 10-bagger, you know. Mm, yeah. 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 Anyway. There you go. So that's okay. A, um, so let's get back to the actual. About him. Yes, that is a good <laughs> the, history. That was a good. No, that was good. It was good to have that stuff. Um, does this change anything? I think that's the other question, right? So like, well, that's the so thing. Like, that, that's what I was doing it from the perspective that's... of the uh, the chip co- the chip competitors, right? Potentially, yep. might be upset. Might not be anything you can do about it. Might not actually matter that much. Whatever. Um, I don't think it, I'm erring on the side. It doesn't matter that much. Doesn't matter because okay. I don't. I think you'd be surprised how little information they're going to be able to get about their competitors and stuff like that. So, oh, okay. I just had a power dip here. The lights just went out. Oh, oh my computer did not. Oh, there's light. No, there's thunder as well. Oh, thunder. Okay. A little akadaka, man. We got a, Oh, uh, there on? it goes again. It dipped again. Either that or I'm blinking solidly. <laughs> there's something Dave's, wrong with my Dave's blinking. power supply equipment, uh, experiment's <laughs> gone wrong. It's Whoa. Taking down the grid. <laughs> so Take if we go. All right. Well, oh, God. we've already okay. got all the ultimate. If I history, drop so. out. Hopefully we're. You no, know, it's only been a th- thirty-eight minutes amp hour, right? Thirty-five. Okay. Minute amp hour oh, really? Are we thirty-eight minutes in? Yeah. Seriously? Is that no. long or short? Thirty-seven minutes in. Oh, geez, that's a long. I thought. I thought. Jeez. You thought you just started talking? No, you were talking long. for a while there, man. Uh, yeah, okay. You know right. That, yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah I'd be like. Gab, to, yeah. You know. <laughs> Anyway, you know, I, I can tell more tell. stories if you want. If you want to go for a you know, two-hour okay. episode, we can... no, I think we should get back to the how, how it impacts people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, how I, it so impacts like, people. I, I, some things I think about. Um, Redisauce is not a software company. I don't care what they say. So, like, do I think that like uh, they claim to be into? Yeah, th- there's an interesting slide on which shows them being. Can you a... share that slide deck. I just had the actual. Uh, is it public enough that we could share it or no? Um, yeah, audience? I don't have a direct link. Oh, okay. Though, let me try. Oh, hang on. Oh. I have the Zoom link that I'll at least drop in the. Um, there's a public Zoom webinar, so I'll drop that in the show hang notes. On. Yeah, I will try and give you. I'm not this. sure it's going to be that exciting, right? It's like basically no. okay, I've forward sent it to investor you on type Google. stuff, so and then like hopefully um, they're, But they're going over the same slide deck that we're talking about here. So yes. if right, if it's not so available if here, if you're playing along at home, you can actually have the slide deck up and you can have a look. Right. Um, there's an interesting thing on page, on page, where we fit. It's a product life cycle on page 10. It's where we fit, or it could be page 11 or whatever. Yeah. But page 10, it's uh, it's titled Where We Fit. Mm. So where Renesis now fits in the right from re- requirements through system architecture, electronic subsystem, component mm. design, electronics design, which is ECAD, electronic subsystem, system assembly, and then the final product, where they fit. They yeah. they reckon that they fit, or I think I think this means now that yeah. yes, yeah, it does. Yeah. They fit into the the middle portion. electronics in the middle <laughs> the, the subsystem architecture the component design and the electronics design subsystem which yeah. means device evaluation device selection and of course they make the devices and yeah. then simulation chips, and PCB design yeah right. yeah but that but actually they, make I, I think they board. extend further than that cuz they're not including product uh, procurement mm. so i think i think they extend into with I think, um, does renaissance run direct i mean i know they do for no, the big no no they probably don't do direct i think they do a lot of distribution for like mass market 
Right. I don't know if you can buy direct from Renesis. I've never used Renesis. I can't, and you can't, but uh, the big, but right. the big no, ones Right. No, I'm can. sure if you're full. Believe me, any company oh, yeah. is big enough to buy direct. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> when Apple calls you, you buy direct. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> yes, when, when Apple throws a billion dollars at you fat, to please. stock up on. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, yeah. Uh, One oh, thing that's not mentioned in here that's always interesting to me is like, in like especially in the value chain of all this stuff, um, mm. it's like they sell... You know, it's not their entire portfolio. It's not even a, I don't even know what portion of the portfolio it is. But like a lot of their stuff is software driven and they don't list software or firmware driven, I suppose. They don't list the firmware right. anywhere in here. They don't, that's no. not a product that they're selling because yeah. in this space, it's often just, it's a supporting element. And so they're not yes. like saying like, right. oh, this is the thing that we. Thing. And, yeah, and, and thing. they just bought more of that thing with the tasking side of things with yeah, the automotive. Yeah, uh, the, interesting. Yeah automotive market so i assume they've got their own tools yes yes they do they've got a web-based um tool it's uh the quick the quick connect studio it's called is their soft is their software package yeah i know it's kind of a yucky name yeah yeah Yeah. and it's all designed to renaissance part in the on the the micro side i don't no no i'm pretty sure i haven't yeah so yep hmm I know so uh, well, Renaissance is in the new Arduino R4. I know that. Oh, like okay. they're they're making overtures into the like into the mass market space, what right? What card are they using on there? What oh, Cortex it, something something mo- something. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought they were using that um no, really. Their main CPU on the new thing Arduino is a Renaissance? R4? Yeah. There's a micro on there, but then there's an ESP thirty two as well, I think. Yeah, there's a module. Right. Yeah, so it's uh, there's a there's an ESP32 module that they're using in with the AT mode just to give it Wi-Fi, which is interesting, right? Renaissance hmm. I don't believe has a Wi-Fi chip, and then it is the RA4M1 microprocessor. Wow, exciting name! Yeah, terribly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, fine. I mean, I'm like just... I shouldn't make fun of that's it. it's fine. Like literally, it's a fine name. I, that was that was <laughs> just snarky sure for part. absolutely yeah. no reason. Yeah, no, I don't know why just I did just that. based on the name. No, yeah, I no. I do that all the time. Yeah, I mean, like, all these are terrible. Yeah. Everything's a terrible name. It's fine. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't. Yeah, like I said, I've never designed with it, and like they might break into more spaces with this. That's that's interesting. Um, hmm. I yep. think they're. I think they're trying to drive into new spaces as well. Um, right. I've never used anything though. I just don't. I don't. I don't have any access to it. So, got it. Yeah. And and for those, um, Altium call this acquisition Project Brightside. There's a wank word. There's a wank yeah. name for it. Apparently, this is one of their projects is to sell the company. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> like Altium have been, I'm sure they've been shopping the company around for a long, long time. Yeah, sure. Um, you know. Yeah, you're so, always for sale, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, th- this is an interesting story. We'll, we'll link in. It's uh, it's behind a paywall, but we'll link in in an archive version of it, which mm-hmm. is really That's nice, right. uh, yep. which is the article. It's an Australian Financial Review article, and it tells the story of how this acquisition happened. So they, they entered into a confidentially, uh, confidentiality agreement on on December 8 last year, and I went and checked. I did my – I'm the, being the good journalist that I am, I went and checked oh, yes, to see if there was any bounce in yeah. price, to see yeah. if there was any bounce in share price after or before December 8, and there wasn't. There was a couple of months before, so maybe some people had wind a couple of months before. Oh, Dave, you don't see the bounce. You just see the people <laughs> exiting and – <laughs> making money, you know, entering and making money, I suppose. Yeah. So anyway, so they entered into a confidentiality agreement uh, back then, and yeah, but it, apparently, um, it, they the two companies um, came about this deal because they uh, Renesis started using Altium software only a year or two before. That. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they started using it. And I guess all the, I don't know, did all the engineers and managers, or it probably started from an engineer's going, Man, can you like imagine switching tool? over an entire, oh, I know. you imagine switching over an entire company to that? Well, I'm not sure if it was an entire company or whether it was just some division or some project I, started I using just, it, but I don't know. But, that, but yeah, it's a big deal. things have happened, I'm sure, right? Yeah, you know, but like yeah. just... The scale I, uh, what were they using sort of before that? Maybe Zukan, because Zukan's a Japanese package. Very That's big the only Japan, other. Yeah. 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 Well, I think yeah. it's only big in Japan, isn't it? Oh, no, no, no. It has a US presence. Zukan has a it US does. presence. And they do like high speed interconnect too, I thought. Like, um, right. I was thinking yeah, I don't for, know like, anyone in Australia that like uses that. it. I like, don't know uh, anyone here that uses yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not a thing. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, Zukin's a Japanese uh, PCB uh, company. I've never used it, but it's kind of highly regarded, you know. Yeah. Um, yep. there's, yeah, apparently it's a good tool. Yeah, I think they're doing hard um, stuff, right? I mean, I think that's what it comes mm. down to, right? I think yeah, so I would assume tools. a Japanese company were using a Japanese maybe. CAD tool. You know? Maybe. So, know. yeah, maybe, maybe they were using Zukin and they started using Altium for some reason. We don't know. that They don't go into details, but uh, there you go. And then they started talking and not, not long, like a year after that or something, they approached Altium and it, 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 it tells you they were having dinner or something. What was – um? <laughs> they actually yeah, tell you in the article. It was a weird article. detail. It was, weird de- it was yeah, like they yeah. went out for dinner or something. It's, like, it's who very cares specific. If they, went out for dinner? They, they actually went out for dinner and they said, hey, yeah, would you like be interested in being kind of bought thing, out? Yeah. And they went, yeah. Eh, yeah, but that's how know. it always goes. Oh know, yeah, right? uh, it's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep, and um, and then apparently they just went, oh yeah, let's throw it over to our various lawyers. Um, and uh, they even named the lawyers like um, Altium had uh, J.P. Morgan and King and Wood, M- Mailsons were the Do- uh, lawyers, and uh, Deutsche Bank and DLA Piper were the um, doesn't matter. That's team for matter. yeah, I don't know. but it goes into specific <laughs> detail. I love yeah, articles that go yeah, into that's, specific that's listed detail. In the, but that kind of felt like that was just listed in the deal paperwork. Come oh, maybe may, maybe it was. Yeah, I yeah, read yeah. the deal paper. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think they've so maybe they haven't done extra journalism there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. They're probably just reading from the that's, that's which, the same which is a big they document. Was a like the a actual deal, yeah. the deal paper is big. It's like the it was, Project Brightside scheme implementation agreement. And it's I, I it's it's a hundred no it's sixty nine pages so it's you know it's quite you'll have to yeah oh that's very yeah legally oh, every here we go. sentence gets a a reference God ugh synergies Dave that's what happened here <laughs> synergies that's what happened this is on page fifteen of the slide deck that you sent me there's oh just a, okay oh, oh says, synergies oh oh yeah awesome. the magical thing where two comedies come together and somehow they're synergies. <laughs> <laughs> they make more money because of it. <laughs> the synergy, yes. What is it you say you make here? Oh, we make money. Bar graph go up. Bar graph That's go right, up. Bar gra- up and, uh, yeah. And if it's, a, if it's a line chart, it goes up to the right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Oh, I love it. Um, uh, yes. Oh, what was that? That was um, uh, Microchips um, CEO Steve uh, Sengi's book. That was the name oh, yeah. of his book, Up and to the Left, wasn't it? Up and to the right, or something. Yeah, you don't go to the left. Which, that's bad. Yeah, where it's yeah. up. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Which is, yeah. yep, the name of the curve of the graph. That. <laughs> yeah, I mean growth. that's every every VC presentation. You have to have right. that chart, right? Yes. Or else, yes, you do. why would you be there? Yeah. No, so exactly. You, you so, just always make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> There it is. So yeah, it, it has left a lot of people scratching their head about well, what's going to happen. Um, so there's uh, there's talk on the EV blog forum. Of course there is. Of course. Um, and yeah, people are going well. You know, speculating are they going to scrap the uh, you know the cheaper monthly by cheaper? I mean, a couple of thousand dollars. Um, mm, yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, a year. They 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 currently have a maintenance contract of a couple of thousand dollars a year, and that gets you yeah. the full package. But you have to keep it up. Yeah, the Otherwise, list price... it stops working. Yeah, they don't publish the pricing. Oh but no, it's usually like about famously 6K, doesn't. Yeah. 6K for a seat and about twenty five hundred no. for maintenance. So, no. <clears throat> and that's like the recurring revenue that they say they have too, right? Like yep. that's, you know, it's going to be, mm. you know, sometimes you can get a deal if you're a salesperson that needs to make their numbers yep. for the quarter or whatever. Blah blah blah. You uh, know, told, Dave, I'll, I'll, let me I'll, tell I'll, you I'll, about uh, a free and open source CAD program that I like. <laughs> <laughs> I, Kai CAD. KeyCAD, Dave. It's KeyCAD. KeyCAD. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You um, finally relented and called it. Key I told cat. you I was going to do this. I said 2023. I was going. To, I was been doing it since 2023. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. there you go. Well done. Trying to trying congratulations. To pat together. on the back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, yeah. I I don't think this will have. I mean, like again, like like thinking about the. I don't think it nature, changes anything. I don't think no, it, I don't think I that changes anything from a lot of companies' perspectives. Like, why would no. it? Right. They and then no, I was like no, looking at the slides you sent over to. Where did that go? Um, you know, they say at least to be run at arm's length. So it does seem like a cash. Yes, they do. Yeah, they specifically make the mention run at arm's length. But 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 they always do that. That's part of the that's acquisition. True. Right? Yeah, that's true. And and Arama staying on a CEO, I'm not sure how long. But once again, like somebody asked me that, uh, do you think Aram will jump ship? And I go, no, this is part of the deal. When you buy a company like this, yeah. you're buying you the three CEO. Three to four years. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's I, written in I the contract. Said usually, your bonuses you know, at the end. Two right? years or something like that. Yeah, yeah you've yeah. got to stay for a couple of years and then you'll yeah. get a nice golden parachute on top of your 600 million or whatever you're getting, you know, cash payout. Yeah. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of money. money. 
Yeah. So you can figure out how many shares he has, I guess. Well, that it's all public information. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it does say on here too, it'll be it is Australian court and regulators. So you were right about that too. Oh, really? Yeah. Australian Doesn't regulators, there you go. Closing. Um, I don't think they will care because there's been a lot of there's been quite a few uh, Japanese uh, buyouts of Australian companies. It's a thing. Um, and once again, nobody knows who or what Altium is or does. Yeah, right, so right, no one cares. Right. So I think we, are, who's we might be the locus favorite? of people that are talking about it, right? I, like, <laughs> yeah, even, yeah, like, no, I was like, looking around on like LinkedIn. I figure like LinkedIn, there'd be more stuff about it, whatever. Like, <laughs> We yeah, are the only ones who care, really, dude. I, no, yeah. people do care, but I just, yeah. I think. No, it's, it's uh, such a small niche. Yeah. And all of them, basically all the people who care just hang out on the EV blog forum. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think, I think that is like the locus. Yeah, right. Or they hang out on the Altium forum, you know. Yeah, I don't right. know if it's still a thing, but, you know. It is, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. sure it is. Yeah. But, yeah, oh, boy. Nah. All right, well, I've had my fill of Altium stuff, and there's other news we could talk about. Uh, probably not that, uh, I don't know, it doesn't really impact us here, but we have talked about it before. Um, one is Altera, another A company, a former A company, which was <laughs> absorbed into Intel, is spinning back out of Intel. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, I've not Leibson. heard this. Steve Leapson wrote about it, our former guest. Oh, really? Yeah. Steve? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. It's on, the, it's on the subreddit. I just saw it today. Right. I, so. I used to get email alerts for his stuff, but I, I don't know. That stopped yeah. at some point. Yeah. Um, and so uh, there's some link. gimmicky thing link. they're doing, um, and they're going to announce the name on Leap Your Day. Because it's a leap forward, as uh, Steve called out, is <laughs> silly. Send the link. Okay. Is it? Uh, huh? Yeah. Here you go. Um, yeah. So I don't know what that really means, other than like I think Intel. You know, I've said for a long time. I think they're starting to parcel up their foundry business versus their IP business. All right. Altera never really fit in there, but it does fit. You know, like why do you need? You know, FPGAs are still a profitable business, I'm sure, generally. But like, why do you need? It to be part of Intel, I don't know. So they're yeah. moving it back out. That's fine. It'll probably still use all the Intel. This is probably what would have happened. <laughs> it probably would have stayed independent and just switched all their business over to the Intel Foundry previously, anyways. But whatever. Hmm. Um, yeah. So that's kind of interesting. And then also with Intel, Intel got out of the Chips Act. So when Steve was on, when Steve Sangy was on the show, he talked about you know kind of the restrictions around the Chips Act in the U.S. That's like the funding thing that was supposed to be up to like fifty yeah. billion dollars to increase u.s investment intel's getting 10 billion of that 50 billion dollars <laughs> yeah that's a lot that, of dough well, yeah but they are in That'll, proportion of the i know yeah market true. space true. They, if you're trying to drive say they new are, i know US, i mean maybe they don't really say yeah. about u.s chip innovation they're really just trying to build the manufacturing base it sounds but, like a, you know getting 20 percent of the of the government yeah, coin, of the, ba- the um, bag, yeah, is uh, yeah, but they probably own twenty percent of the market, so you know it's probably I mean, not. Yeah, and they're that huge, bad. and like, and yeah. they're they're experts, right? But like, All right. but damn, like that's right. that's well, a lot does, of that's a does lot this of zeros. Mean, does this mean that Xilinx is going to respin out of AMD because AMD bought Xilinx? I, I yeah, don't know right. who, who was first. <laughs> Was it a, was it Xilinx bought AMD first? I'm oh, sorry, AMD bought Xilinx first, or no, did Intel buy? Got, I think Altera got bought first. <laughs> Xilinx and yeah. Altera, like an yeah, Intel and AMD, know. like they just like oh my god. Yeah. It's just I'm, like I'm, I'm, I'm sure it happened just just dealing. because the other company did it. You know, I'm yeah, sure. right. It's just like oh geez, we can't have them buying. We have to buy an FPGA company too. Oh uh, yeah, that that no. sounds right. Yes, yeah, yes. Right. So yeah, because <sighs> yeah. of course. Um, Intel and AMD are kind of sort of rivals. Right. If you don't know. You know. If you don't know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. If you've not used a computer in the past 30 years. <laughs> and Xilinx and Altera were rivals. Yeah. And yeah. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. So we'll see where this all goes. That's I mean, it. Wow. Again, okay. I think this is another one that like, right. doesn't have any impact other than like, well, you got to learn it. You got to get another new t shirt, maybe, um, if you're an <laughs> Altera user. Um, <laughs> right. But you know, so, brand so here's there. what it's being spun out on its own. What's the? I think so. Yeah, it's going to just become its own company again. How does that work? But no, but it's surely Intel will still be the shareholder, right? Um, how does spinning that, out? I, I don't know. I don't know. Like they could, if they go public again, then I, I suppose they could get relisted as a separate company. But well, okay, they and then new shares they and could share their holdings. They could sell owner. their holdings or something. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Raise yeah, money. I guess. Right. Could be. Wow. Okay. 
If I didn't say before, you should never, ever take investment advice from Dave and myself. <laughs> Dave will make you think that you should take investment advice from him, but don't. I, I told uh, people they should have bought out him, and if they listened to me, they'd be rich now. Just I just didn't do it myself. Don't take any investment advice from Dave. Don't. Or me. <laughs> hey, um, Steve's got some interest in history in his article here, yeah, which he is does. great because yeah. he's been in the industry forever. You know? yeah, exactly. so, so he knows all the players. And listen right? to the show with Steve. He was on our show. You know, yes, yeah, yeah, it's on, great. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should get him back on. Yeah, we should probably. Yeah. Mm, yep. Yeah, so yeah, uh, four, these four people secured $750,000 in funding in 1983 to start Altera. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Bernie Wuschmidt, Ross Freeman, and Jim Barnett, the second, <laughs> founded. Oh, no, they, they founded Xilinx. There you go. Um, so yeah, wow. <laughs> Interesting, yep. interesting history. I'm going to have to have a uh, right after this. This is so uh, eat some lunch and have a read. There you go. Hmm. There you cool. go. I'll t- I'll tweet that. Great. And I'll have to subscribe to the EU Journal Daily Newsletter by Steve as well. Excellent. Oh yeah, I should do that too. Uh, there's so yeah. many. There's so few places. That's the thing. Like I just like honestly, I'm leaning on like LinkedIn and eh, you know Twitter once in a while if I just click over there or like Mastodon sometimes, but there's not a lot of electronics on there. And like, it's just, I, I mean, honestly, Mastodon it's just LinkedIn. was the place, dude. I thought I it was never the said place, that. huh? I had never said huh? that. You've just been making fun of me the whole time. <laughs> right. uh, I'm just trying to get some, some news. You know, I just, right. Right. Dave, what I'm really trying to say is I miss RSS readers. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been unsubscribing like crazy to everything in my inbox. If, yeah. if it has an unsubscribe button, I've hit unsubscribe mm. religiously for like the last yeah. nine months, twelve months. Um, That's the right move. Although yeah. I probably wouldn't have done that on on the EE, on Steve's one, but you yeah, know, so I, I don't know why that stuff. There's the Dead, Jedic Daily Brief, and like this kind of stuff comes through there too. Like that was, um, I forget who's the editor of that thing, and it's you know it's a lot of press releases, so you kind of got to dig through it. Mm, um, I right. like the anal- analog.io. That's a good one. That's by Mahir Shah. Like, that's a good one. That's got some industry stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just hard to get news these days for like this kind of super niche stuff because there's no, there's no infrastructure supporting it. Right? It was all no, ad supported no, yeah, for a long yeah, time, yeah, exactly. and it just doesn't exist anymore. There's no yeah. reporters. There's nothing like that. No, no, so it's nothing. It's down to press Steve, releases, Steve blogs, is the last of a dying breed, individuals. You know? Yeah, like, I mean, like uh, EE journals trying to hold this stuff up, and there's some other small, small advertising things, but like so much of their stuff is crap that you. You do have to <laughs> right. find yeah, no, individuals You have to there, find the right? gems, yeah. Yeah, right. Mm. It, but Steve is a gem, so. He's yes, a gem. totally. He's a gem. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. he okay. won't just report stuff that's happening. He will put his, you right. know, I don't know how long he's been in the industry, but he'll put history behind and he'll put names behind it and all that yeah, sort of jazz, right. you know. So, yeah, yeah, he'll actually tell a story. So. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Max is another one who writes on their site. Max Maxfield, like he's been oh, around yeah, a long time yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, Max, Max is Max, great. Max, yep. Yeah. So. Yep. Nah, but it's it's, we're getting down there, you know. <laughs> it's just like not a lot. Of, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, but Renesis bought out him, huh? I can still remember going to the Renesis. Um, they they uh, flew me over to the Renesis um, trade show back in oh, 2010, maybe. I wait. Is this I the thing remember- when you flew to California? Yes. Yes. It was Renaissance. And oh, yes. I didn't realize. Oh, yes. Okay. That was, yeah. That was Renaissance. Okay. I still got their merch. I still got all the merch from the show there. I still got like a wheelie bag. You know, everyone got like a wheelie bag merch, like a, a um, actual, you know, travel See, they're wheelie overpaying bag for stuff. stuff since 2010 <laughs> when they brought Dave over for. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They, they specifically <laughs> brought me over there. Oh, well, I was to, I was to do the big introduction for their um, new uh, contest they had. So they had a design contest. I was one of the judges, but I was yeah. I was to get up in front of a thousand people and um, introduce the contest and talk about it and stuff do like stand that. Stand up, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, do some stand up and yep, yep. So so they got <laughs> oh, me over man. to do that. Um, that was one of the things. But the other thing was also to host a dinner party. We, once again, with like 500 people or something, you know, this huge, book this huge conference um, hall in inside the uh, hotel we were staying at. And, uh, and <laughs> so this was one of the two big things they flew me over to do. So it, like, and, there, and there's all these tables, right? So everyone's sitting down eating their fancy pantsy dinner and everything. And I'm, I, along with a bunch of other um, people from... 
Renesis were up on like a head table kind of thing. Deist, and then we yeah. have the mic, right? So we got the mic and we're supposed to like have this like quiz or something like during dinner. And and in the end, like nobody's let, like nobody, I don't think anyone could hear me with the mic. So I ended up standing up on the table with the mic trying to get this thing started and like nobody was paying attention. And and I finally got the uh, cut, Anecdote for um, the, the internet, you know, dude. hand gesture across the throat, just cut it. No, nah, just just don't bother. <laughs> don't bother doing this. It was a complete fail because everyone was too busy having having happy having their expensive fancy dinner in the restaurant. They that's didn't want to yeah. have a question and they didn't want to have. They don't a want the. They don't want the, the thing. They don't the, want to be the yeah, internet clown yeah. to talk. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think the year before that, Renesis they they paid top. They put on a really good gig. They got Adam Savage in mm. to yeah. do a Q and A Q&A thing. They had no, no, no. They got both the Missbusters in. They got Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman, Heineman, and they, um, uh, they built something for the show or something, you know. So yeah, <laughs> so, oh, man. serious coin was spent corporate by corporate gigs. <laughs> Renesis, yeah, yeah, corporate gigs back in the day. But mm. oh, geez, that was yeah, that, that was fun. That was fun. But uh, yep, they inv- they invited me a year later, but I I. Uh, Decline, turn that one down. So I had a young baby then yep. by that point. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, but there Classic. you go. Uh, yeah. Renesis by Altium. Wow. Wow. There you go. Well, congratulations if you're an Altium shareholder. You, uh, yeah. Yeah, go sold out. party. Good party. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think, look, I don't think it's going to change much maybe like i i wouldn't say it's not going to change much in five years time like i think we'll come back in five years probably still be doing this um and <laughs> i ain't got anything we'll else go, to do come on man okay i'm a dad okay. now so, so it's obvious right <laughs> <laughs> you've got to have the state got to have the stable gigs now <laughs> this is you're saying you're saying this is this is the this, stable gig. This is you're, the stable. This is one of the amp stable hour gigs. Is the stable this gig. highly paid amp hour yeah, is the stable right, gig dude. right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, just gotta cash it in, just like my Altium stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> uh, well, all we gotta do is one of those slide decks, dude, with one I of know. the fancy, slide you know, decks. that's all the fancy synergy. It's like, it's like if you were if you were like an AI engine and you're like, what input causes an output? It's like, oh well, yeah. If you make slide decks, then you get billions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Machine learning, Dave. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wonder if OpenAI yeah. can. Just make us a slide deck to make oh, us a can. million dollars. It can. It, it can? Yeah, of course it can. I'm yeah, sure yeah. you can get slide decks, at least the verbiage right. and oh, yeah. stupid right. images. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, speaking of, last week, uh, a couple people told me that the, um, you know how we were said, uh, Uncle, I named it Uncle Al's Eating Garbage Again because it was about the, oh, right, yes. the underwater robot that I knew that yes. was actually Uncle Al. I, I remembered Uncle later it was, actually, yep. it was actually Uncle Ralph. That was oh, Uncle which Ralph, is a, which is a better <laughs> name, I feel like. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, but Uncle Al's okay, okay as well. Okay, uh, right. But it, but how Uncle did anyone Al, know? Did you tell people and they corrected you? What it, no, 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 no. The people, the thing that people mentioned to me is that when I when you type out Al, uppercase A, under under lowercase L, it yeah. looks like Uncle AI is eating garbage, oh, again, which also kind of works right. because it was an AI image too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So yep. what you should do is you should name yourself Al, and then everyone thinks you're an AI organization. Oh, that's you, killer. Yeah, that's make a killer. Lot of money. Yeah. Name your next born Al. Al, there you go. Well, it's not it's it's not too late to change the name. They won't realize. I'm just saying, for, your, for your, my, your youngest is child? young enough. Yeah. 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 Um, Al. Probably not going to do that. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> oh, but that's that's a winning idea. It is. Yeah. It is. Yep. 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 Al. Wow, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's great! Or if you're really I'm sure bold, that'll Alf. be Elon Musk's next child. Will there you be go. AI. Yeah, there you, you know. go. Yeah, yeah, that guy <laughs> keeps making new humans. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Anyway, that's great. So yeah, I don't, um, I don't expect much to change. Yeah. Like, are you feeling the same way? I expect. Yeah. Yes. I. Yeah. I yes. Yeah. Almost. Almost certainly. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, it'll. It'll eventually over the next couple of years. I expect it to change in pricing and uh, like availability, whether or not they keep up the web base, whether or not they go with the, like, oh, sorry, the uh, sub- subscription 
um, thing or whether or not oh, they subscriptions go with, don't go anywhere. I don't like, think. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, you yeah, don't get don't rid so. of subscription, do you? Which is like I think it's like sixty percent of their business is yeah. subscription. So I mean, it's always like yeah. uh, maintenance is always like a yeah subscription in disguise. Like mm. oh, you buy you buy the, you bought this piece of software now we're gonna. Mm have a subscription every year. It's like, oh, oh you mean I'm paying for yeah. the software every year? It's but so the, but the interesting difference now is that, right, everyone's been complaining about it for years. Oh, Altium just care about the share price, right? So the engine keep oh, doing yeah. all this stuff to do the share. Right, there's no pressure like that anymore, oh, like right? It's now privately owned. Yeah, yeah. might move out of the, yeah, that's true. So that's it's like, will will they just let them focus on the tool now? Because there's no share. Well, yeah, they sure, just got married to a new company, you know, let themselves go. <laughs> well, gain, there is shareholder pressure because people you know? own shares. In Renesis, right? <laughs> People own shares, shares in Renesis, but it's not the same. You know, it's just sure. one little, little tiny cog. You know, oh. I, I don't even look like how big is it? Well, Renesis, like what a sixty 50, billion dollar company? 50, I think fifty billion. So fifty yeah. billion. So this deal yeah. at five billion is like I said, one tenth, maybe. Mm. But it wouldn't be that in revenue, right? No, it wouldn't. Yeah, There's right. no way to be so. So from now on, right? According to the shareholders of Renesis. Altium's probably, yeah, but, I don't know, one fiftieth of the revenue of. Yeah, but Dave, what if know? there's synergies? If there's synergies, there could yeah, be more. Synergies, oh, they're going to be all synergies, over it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They yeah. can milk that synergy cash cow yeah, until synergies, it comes on. You know, mm. Mm, synergies, mm. delicious synergies. Synergy flavored milk. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Boy, this is just no. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. So yeah, I think yeah, there's less uh, pressure. Now to yeah, that's like yeah. to to keep up the revenue, so they could they could easily slash prices, mm. right? They uh, could they, so they they they, they, they might, will not. Well, I don't. I I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Okay. I don't. I don't think. Yeah, why would you possibly no. do that? I mean, like they're trying well, to capture. Dep- yeah, capture more well, of the market, it, maybe. Right, but like I don't. Know. Well. Uh, Rama's still the CEO, but now he doesn't have the pressure of the shareholders, but now he has to report to the board of directors of Renesis, right? And what will be their thing? Will they go, oh, we don't care. We just wanted your tech. You know, we just wanted your cloudy tech or something, you mm, know? Could be. And um, th- they, will they just let Aram just continue to do what he does? In which case, I don't know. How do you set prices in a company that yeah. doesn't care? Yeah, maybe like, you just need the subscriber base. Maybe the management's just like, you know... Yeah. All your base are yeah. belong to us. <laughs> All your bases belong to us, yes. Yeah. And what's um and what becomes finally of Circuit Studio? <laughs> Everyone, if you don't haven't been following the Circuit Long Studio forgotten. saga, Nobody there's there's still hangers on on the EV blog oh, forum boy. going, I, yeah. I paid for Circuit Studio and you promised to give me upgrades and I haven't <laughs> guys, had an upgrade in five years. Guys, guys, guys please, who turned the lights please. out? <laughs> so, yes, the uh, yeah. lights have been out on Circuit Studio for like five years now. And that, that's the one you used to be able to buy through Farnell slash Element right. 14. Yeah. Yeah, that was the one, and that that tool was requisite. That tool was at request of Element fourteen because they lost, they they were selling some other tool. I can't remember what, and then they wanted their own tool to sell on their store. Oh wait, did um, did Altium buy Upverter too? Is Upverter yes, part yes, of this Altium deal? Yes, Altium bought Upverter. Oh my yes. god, they yes. also got that modular yeah. design. That's right. Yes. Also, yeah. I think uh, Pinocchio. There was another board. Not uh, someone made a joke Ooh, about it. That doesn't. No, no, not Pinocchio. Doesn't ring a bell. No, what was it? The gum sticks? Gum sticks. That's it. Gum sticks. Yeah, Out your own gum. gum. God, I haven't heard about gum sticks for. That was like a dev board, ever. like yeah, yeah. It was a, thing, some right? sort of dev board thing. Yeah, some little. Yeah, gum sticks gives customers the power to solve their electronic design challenges. I thought, yeah, parent organization, all right. team. Gum oh, sticks really? as well. Oh, look at there this, you go. man. <laughs> They're just going to be digging stuff out of the junk drawer that's just like, hey, look what else we bought. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. So up oh, for gum sticks. Yeah. Yep. I wonder yeah. if there's like a page. Is there an Altium page of things they bought and shuttered? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I wonder if they'll still keep, because uh, you can still download auto tracks for free. They actually mm, released it classic. as freeware. Yeah. 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 Maybe, oh, maybe they'll. Maybe they'll get the uh, uh, trademark back for Auto Tracks, and they'll sue the other. You know, they'll sue the Auto Tracks guy out of business. <laughs> for those who don't know, I'm not sure if I've told this story, but there is another PCB software called Auto Tracks. Mm. Go, go check it out. It's written by one guy. It's written mm. by it's. 
You know, that's it's such a great name. Like, guy. why wouldn't you want to steal that, right? Auto Tracks, yeah. He used the same name as what Altium were using for their PCB uh, product, but Altium let the trademark lapse. And the guy went, well, I'm going to take that. I'm just going to take it. <laughs> and then um, Altium went, well, well, we threatened to sue you. And the guy just went, well, you didn't maintain the trademark, tough titties. And our team just went, oh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so, so this guy has been selling all his own version of auto tracks for like 25 years or auto, something. Auto tracks, <laughs> Taylor's version. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's, oh, my God, I've got, I've got to look it up. His name's Illager or something, Illager, oh, Dex. And it, it, well, no, no, technically it's called Auto Tracks Dex, and I'll mm. send you the link here and you can still buy it. <laughs> I'm sure you can still. It's written by one guy. It's it's just hilarious. And he named it the same as Pro Tool Auto Tracks. Unbelievable. Auto Tracks Dex. It does integrated design, schematic design, PCB design, and manufacturing. This oh, website yeah. is a trip, man. This is it's, a 90s. It's, this it's, is it's from originally the 90s. 90, yeah, it's original HTML from the 90s. Yeah. Although it kind of looks like it might be a, um, uh, what was that site that I called? One of the one of the content management systems. Oh boy, auto playing video. <laughs> <laughs> but but you got to take your hat off to this guy, right? He's written this all himself, and it does three D modeling as well. The three D models look pretty cute, actually. Um, and, and and it does it, it does everything. It does simulation as well, schematics, PCB. It's fully integrated wow. package, all in one. Wow. I don't know how many users he has. Probably a couple hundred. <laughs> He's written it all himself. So, yeah, yeah, hats off. But Altium threatened to take legal action against him at the time, and he just went, meh. And Altium just went, meh. <laughs> How to steal a company's name, 101. <laughs> just wait until they, oh, yeah, oh, wait wow. until the this trademark website lapses. is a trip, man. It's great. It's yeah. great. Yeah. You can still buy it. Can you still, yeah, buy how much? For 145 bucks. There you go. You can buy Auto Tracks decks for $145. Never expires. Purchase now with PayPal. Mm. <laughs> it's great. Oh, boy. And, and and there's no subscription rubbish either. You buy it. It's yours. Yeah. Bingo. You get, you get 12 right. months of upgrade. Just see if you yeah. want to advertise in the Empire because you're doing a good job there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know anyone who actually uses it, so good luck. But, yeah, anyway, yeah, it's a, it's oh, a one-man This has got a lot of sites. Holy crap. Yeah. This is really, really something. There's yeah. a newsletter. There's a newsletter. There's a newsletter. Now <laughs> I know what I'm going to sign up for, Dave. <laughs> right. Where, where's the newsletter? I can't see it. It just redirects me to the front page, so I don't actually oh, know. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And they even right. call it Unified Design. Yeah. Which is what uh, unified, which is what Altium called their unified platform. They got, you know, it was unified design. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, real, real artists steal, don't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, it's great. Auto tracks decks. <laughs> Terrific stuff. Oh, boy, our amp house well and truly up, dude. It is. So that's that's mm. the Altium extravaganza. That was the ultimate extravaganza. I had other things I wanted to talk about too, but I guess we'll talk oh, about them next time. Uh, yeah, next week. It's okay, next time. Yep. Cool. All right. Cool bananas. Cool. There you go. See you soon. Catch you next time.